All right. Jumping into it for real this time, we got D.I. King versus Chan M.M., Mega Man versus Pikachu on Smashville. So this should be an interesting matchup where, uh, you know, Mega Man has that sort of fortress-like style where he wants to just wall people out. Um, ooh, gets the footstool. I don't think he was intending for that, or if he was, he definitely wanted the short hop footstool as opposed to the full hop. Either way, Pikachu strings, doing typical Pikachu things, taking him up to 64% already. Uh, <laughs> we have a, uh, an edge guard attempt coming through. Hits through Leaf Shield with forward smash. Oh, that was a really smooth auto-cancel transition from the uh, down air to forward smash. Really good buffer on his part. And right now, he's just swarming Chan, not giving him the sort of space that Mega Man wants. Um, excellent spacing coming through with those uh, Thunder Jolts as well. Leaf Shield going to tack on some big damage. Ar already, that's 46% off of that uh, for that conversion. Back here actually coming pretty close to killing. Good uh, quick attack cancel spacing coming in. Was not able to get the conversion into up smash, nor was he able to get the thunder spike he was looking for there. Nair out of shield, not quite going to do it. Oh! Oh, just barely manages to recover. A bit of a stare down at the ledge. He's fishing a little bit for the skill, of course. Pikachu can have some difficulty killing if he doesn't get the thunder spiking uh, window down. Um, although Nair out of shield, of course, very potent. Pivot forward, smash at the ledge. Big, uh, big coverage. Up smash is powerful if it can land. Um, and of course, Mega Man is a difficult character to edge guard, even though he doesn't have very many means of protecting himself. His aerial mobility is just so good that it's hard to, uh, it's hard to figure out where he's gonna be when he's off stage. So meanwhile, we're living up in the... Dash attack going to kill. Pikachu's dash attack actually really strong. I, I think that would have killed about 20% earlier with the amount of rage he had. Um, but we find it there. It was poking through the shield a little bit. Now he's getting his strings. Smart use of rush to get out of the string there. Uh, managed to avoid pressure and then B reverse leaf shield. Oh, managed to get scooped. It's threatening with that back air, of course. Oh, manages to uh, get hit by the forward air. Oh, I'm surprised he was able to shield that in time uh, to get that up smash punish. Um, goes for the back air. Pikachu is a little too short for that. He's going to have to catch a jump if he wants to get that sort of read. Back throw coming in. He's going to try for some sort of edge guard here. Going to be looking for a back air, but not going to get it. Good grab. Up throw, not gonna kill quite yet. He wants to keep back throw fresh, uh, since he just recently used it. All right, so we're looking on, and Di King's just doing a good job of holding on to the stock and building his lead. Back throw, finally gonna do it there. 87% uh, percent deficit now in favor of Di King. Uh, we'll see if Chan is able to bring it back. So. Um, Chan's gonna have to be careful now. He's definitely within a kill percent of Thunder Spike for sure. Pivot forward smash at the ledge, or just a regular forward smash at the ledge for that matter would probably kill. Up smash, maybe not yet. It might kill now, but oh, he manages to actually get through finally the Thunder Jolt pressure. The pellet interrupting the uh, the pellet interrupting the forward smash there, and thankfully for Chan. And this is one of the few matchups where uh, the forward smash is a little bit more difficult to bait with because Mega Man's pellets do outreach it. Oh, almost got the read with the down air that he's been going for uh, earlier today. Um, but D.I. King not having any of that lands with the forward smash to clutch out the first game. We'll see if there's a character switch, but I'm going to say probably not. We actually do have a switch coming in to Mr. Game & Watch. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. This is actually a pretty decent matchup for Mr. Game & Watch since he's so hard to edge guard. And of course, uh, he does big damage combos as well, which Pikachu does not like dealing with. So, let's we'll see what happens. Um, it was uh, D.I. King on the first game. So, gets the conversion down throw to up tilt 31%. 
gets him off stage. But the thing is, it's, it's so hard to challenge uh, Fire because it's uh, he does have invincibility on the uh, on the front hit or on the way up, as well as protected by a pretty generous hitbox. So it's definitely something you have to be careful of. But he's doing a pretty decent job right now. There we go. Something I wanted to see more was a uh, dash attack coming through. Game and Watch's dash attack, pretty fantastic. Does about everything except kill. Uh, de decent damage, super disjointed, hard to punish, um, and especially with his uh, short initial dash and his incredibly quick dash to shield time, uh, it's definitely a mix-up uh, whenever he dashes in at you, whether he's going to dash attack or just shield or go the other way even. Managing to evade this barrage of uh, finishing moves is Chan. Does not get the conversion, and the up smash is going to take it. So now that he no longer has rage, he should be within uh, within down throw up air kill conversion percent if he manages to land the grab. Another thing he's going to be fishing for, of course, is up smash. Full invincibility on the helmet for almost the entire duration of the move. Um, in addition to having extremely minimal cooldown. And sure enough, up smash is going to take it, so only 18% deficit here. Good use of quick attack to get away from the uh, dash attack follow-up. Oh, it gets both the hits of the down air there, uh, the regular and the uh, quake hitbox, so that's getting some big damage in. And as we see, just putting in this work with dash attack... Pressured off stage, but... Knows better than to follow him off. That was actually a smart use of down smash for the punish there. Um, wasn't expecting that, but uh, it did cover most of his options. Does decent damage. So we have some careful playing. Goes for the forward throw. Isn't going to catch him. See, it's so hard to tell what Game & Watch is going to go for at any point because, I mean, it's just a mix of animation and lingering frames and short, uh, short cooldown on everything. Like, every move he makes is sort of like a 50-50 of sorts where you, it's hard to guess what it is he's going to do. So the key to beating Game & Watch is usually just to beat him to the punch because his startup frame data is actually not that spectacular. Um, and of course his super lightweight uh, can make things difficult on him. And if he doesn't land the down throw up air kill conversion, then uh, he has to fish pretty hard for either an edge guard or an up smash if he wants to close out the stock. So as we see, he's throwing out a lot of up smashes, uh, sort of in the similar vein that you would see Mario do it, because uh, it's just such a hard move to change. <laughs> Forward smash managing to clip him at the far edge of the move. That's going to seal the set 2-0 for DI King.